Hi everybody, this is a lecture on what is sociology, Introduction to Sociology, Chapter 1, pages 3 to 17. This is in Module 2. Um, this is Part 1 of the lecture and then of course there will be Part 2. Alright, let's start. So, in this chapter, our learning objectives are we'll learn from basic concepts what sociology encompasses and how everyday topics are shaped by social and histor historical forces. We'll also talk about the development of sociological thinking and we'll learn how sociology originated and understand the signif significance of the intellectual contributions of early sociologists. All right. So what is sociology? Sociology is the scientific study of society that emphasizes the connection between the individual and social structure. Sociology examines the underlying patterns in human behavior and in our relationship with one another. So, a question is, when does sociology emerge? And we trace the beginning of sociology as a field to 18th and 19th century in Western Europe. Why is that? Because of you can see, I listed four forces that changed the world as we know it. Industrial Revolution. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the French Revolution, also the Scientific Revolution, and travel as well as discovery of the New World. So what is the Industrial Revolution? The Industrial Revolution refers to the mechanization of the world. If you think about this, um, before the Industrial Revolution, people lived on farms and um, they did things by hand, right? So if you were a farmer, it's very likely that your grandpa was a farmer, your dad was a farmer, and you did the same jobs that your parents have done for ages. And you lived in a small community that maybe once a week people met in a church or in some temple or in, in some other place where they worshipped the same God or um, the same deity. Now, when Industrial Revolution happened, when we invented, the, as humans, we invented the first engines, things changed. We started doing things differently. Um, we started to build things. For example, um, we started building railroads. And think about how railroads changed the world. They connected us together. They um, brought these small villages closer together. So when first people lived in village, when, um, when we see the development of rails, we see development of towns. Whenever there was a stop on a rail, a town built around it. From towns, we see development of cities factories, offices, and so on. So Industrial Revolution changed the way that we live. Then the French Revolution. Um, I included a little picture here. Um, the French Revolution is about also a different kind of change in how we understand the world. If you think about this, before the French Revolution, if you were born into monarchy, if you were born as a prince or a princess, your life was fantastic. You never had to worry about what you're going to eat, um, what you're going to wear. Sure, you probably got married off very early and to somebody you probably didn't love. But basic necessities were taken care of. You always had food to eat and, you know, uh, clothes to put on your back. Now, if you were born a peasant, the situation was quite dire. You often were born into a large family and often people had large families because they needed people to work in the field. So when you were very little, um, age of four or five, kids were shipped off to work in the fields, right? And even if you worked in the field and you were lucky enough to survive because there was often very little food for the peasants, diseases spread very quickly. So a lot of people died off very early. But let's say you make it and you're an adult working in the fields, whatever you gather in the fields, that's not yours. It goes back to the king. Not only that, you still have to pay taxes on these things. So what happens is people start to revolt against this cruel monarchy and argue, how is it that the lives of kings are more important than the lives of the peasants? And we see for the first time in this history this replacement of privileges for few with rights for many. This argument that every human life, no matter whether you're a peasant or a king, is worth something and is important. So peasants 
revolt against monarchy. The third thing that happens is the scientific revolution, or as you can see here, the age of reason. So what happens is we start to understand the world in scientific rather than religious terms. Um, we start for lo to look for explanations of what is happening in terms of logic and reason, and we move away from, exp uh, from religious explanations. So for example, when somebody passed away, and when we first opened a human body, um, first doctors opened a human body, they started comparing one body to another, and they realized that maybe this person passed away not because that was God's will, but maybe because they had some abnor um, something abnormal in their bodies. Um, maybe there was a disease, maybe there was uh, a tumor that caused this person to die. So we see this replacement of explanation, um, replacement of this religious explanation of why things happen with these scientific, um, scientific reasons for why things are happening. And last but not least, we also start to travel and discover the new world. And as you can see, I put the new world in quotation marks because it wasn't really new. It was new to us who saw it for the first time. However, of course, this world had been there. It just we didn't know about it. So um, because we have um, industrial revolution, because we have engines, we can build ships, because of scientific revolution, we start creating maps based on stars and so on, we start to travel. And with travel, we get to experience different cultures. So we, we can see that people all around the world live in different ways, that they value different things. And we start to also exchange goods um, and materials as well as ideas and values. So for example, we start to um, have things like tea and chocolate. Um, of course, not all good things come from this travel. Um, spread of diseases, issues of racism, um, colonization. Those are also things that have happened because of this travel. So these four forces, Industrial Revolution, the French Revolution, a scientific revolution, as well as travel and discovery of the new world, shape the field of sociology. All right, um, some of the things we'll talk about uh, in sociology will be this idea of social construction. So an idea or practice that a group of people agree that it exists. It is over, often maintained over time by people taking its existence for granted. So what people think and do are products of culture and history. For example, girls liking pink versus boys liking blue. It's not, it hasn't, it's something that we agree upon uh, we believe that it's true, but we as society have created it. That's why it's a social construction. The issue of socialization, we'll talk more about it in chapter 4. But socialization is a process through which children develop an awareness of social norms and values and achieve a distinct sense of self. So um, it also leads to an explanation for social order. So we learn how to behave, act, and what to do in different situations. Another thing we'll talk about is agency and structure. So this idea or this concept that suggests to what, an extent, to what extent an individual's life is determined by social forces. So social structure refers to regularities and patterns in human behavior. So for example, most of us are born into some kind of family. Most of us go to school and work and then college perhaps we start our own families and so on and what happens when we have kids the same thing keeps keeps on repeating kids go to are born in some families go to school uh, go to work and so on and so forth so this social structure continues throughout our life uh, however individuals have the capacity to deviate from patterns to go against the odds this is called agency human choice right so for example not all of us are going to marry and have kids right some of us might decide to stay single not all of us might want to work some of us are going to be travelers and so on so humans uh, have this i have this capability of cre or going against the social structure or creating their own choices. 
Now, social change is another concept that is very important to sociologists and it's um, something that I find very interesting. So one of the concepts we can talk about this social change, the social structure change over time. Think about this. How are the times in which we are living different from the times that came before? So how are your lives different than those of your grandparents? Think about it. I often ask my students, when was the last time that you wrote a letter? And letter by hand, I mean that you wrote a letter. And I don't mean a Christmas card or a birthday card. I mean a letter that you sent to somebody and you waited for somebody to answer. Very few people do that now. Why is that? Because of technology, right? We have email, texting, I mean Snapchats and everything, right? It's much easier to communicate this way. And another thing that changed is think about medicine. I mean, think about the what we can do now with all, with all this medicine that we have, with this... Um, with this, with medicines that we can cure things that many years ago people died from. So these are some of the things we'll talk about. Um, this is end of part one. Part two will start um, on another slide.